But now, I can appeal to zero. Because, uh, now, the expressions that are given to be equal, uh, I can therefore exp replace the one by the other. Left-hand side does not change its value if I take the m dot y and now the minimum over x of the theme f dot x equals, and in order not to destroy the symmetry, I replace that one by not the maximum male age, female age, but the maximum male age. So I've used zero. Now I have to use one. Oh. Well, one, I can only use that when I have that infix. You see, um, sorry, I, I made one, uh, I skipped one motivation. The fact that I appealed to zero by interchanging these terms was partly inspired by the, the desire to use zero. It was also inspired by the desire to use one. And I can only use one provided I have males and females at both sides of my infix minimum. And now I have males and females and females and males at both sides of the infix minimum, so I'm in good shape. However, I cannot use uh, one yet, because that talks about uh, a minimum between two occurring ages, an x and a y. Now, fortunately, and that is a rule of the uh, up and down calculus. And that is that down distributes over up in exactly the same way as and distributes over or and the existential quantification and all those things. That is. And if you didn't know, know this, you would discover that this is a necessary lemma to prove the whole theorem. Uh, I, I suppose that you, people know the, plus, uh, the um, up down calculus, and then this is rewritten as the maximum over x of m of y down f dot x. And the right hand side, similarly, is written as funny open the maximum over x colon colon the f dot y down the m dot x. And now we are in a shape to appeal to one because one states that for all x and y these two expressions are equal, hence, when you quantify over them on account of one, this is true. So there we are. Four steps, two appeals to the up-down calculus, and one appeal to each given once. I love this argument, and the reason why I love it is um, because I can present it without pictures, because uh, this is the type of argument one can construct without any invention just by looking at uh, 
we are intended to say the symbol dynamics. Hmm? It's quite clear that if you wish to use naught and one, you have to use them, that you have to introduce the uh, single minimum and the quantified maximum. Yeah? Uh, and the only knowledge it uses is uh, some knowledge over the up-down calculus. But that is a very general topic and it is not unrealistic to assume that uh, that exists, belongs to our luggage. Yeah, well, that is about it. Um, There are yeah okay. there is one thing that I would like to point out, and that is that <coughs> if you wish to show that some predicate that depends on the expression x, which I assume also to be a predicate, but that's not essential. Um, this is everywhere true. Then in the case that f is monotonic, which is a regular situation, one of the most fruitful ways of rewriting this is that there exists a z such that the z is stronger than the expression and everywhere the f of z holds. Now this is an extremely pleasant possibility of rewriting. The reason that it is so nice is that um, exp, the expression may be of a form such that the place in which it occurs in f makes it difficult to manipulate there. However, here we have uh, exp as the right hand, as, a, as the consequent, and in that uncomfortable place, we now have a variable. Uh, and that gives you the room for lots of um, manipulative possibilities. Um, in particular, uh, it gives you the freedom to uh, choose a nice z. For instance, we choose the strongest z that satisfies this condition. Because the stronger you choose the z, the easier it is to demonstrate this. Uh, now, you, you see, of course, now you see, but, but that strongest z, in order to apply the trick, that strongest z has to exist. Yes. There are, I have encountered many theorems 